Hi guys, it's Amber and today I'm finally bringing you the long-awaited hair care routine that you've all been asking for As many of you guys have noticed my hair is quite long. Ooh, look I even have a little bow in today I take great pride in my hair and how I care for it today I'm gonna tell you guys all my secrets. Does my hair even look good in this angle? I'll include some clips where my hair looks especially good My hair has always been something I cherished so deeply in high school I had hair that grew down past my butt and like when I sat down in a chair I would sit on it my hair has a great capacity to grow and I credit a lot of it to my hair care routine So let's get straight into it. This video is also completely unsponsored So any product I mention is my true true opinion We're gonna get into my day-to-day -day hair care routine my shower routine I'll show you guys at the end to start off with the main things we have nutrition and genetics Obviously eat a good mix of fruit and vegetables take a vitamin if you need to lots of healthy fats omega-3s or whatnot All that good stuff so that your hair can grow properly and then for genetics This is where it might be a little bit heartbreaking for some of you guys you can probably tell by looking at your family if you have really strong hair genes or not I was lucky to be born into a very strong hair family My mom always told me there's this thing if your mother's father has a lot of hair Then you will and my mom's father had a full head of hair his whole life So I've always known I was gonna have good hair because of that I don't know if that's like a scientific fact or not, but it worked for me I guess that works for me. So that's kind of me prefacing that I naturally have pretty strong hair anyway So that's just something to put out there now for how I treat my hair on normal days or not on hair wash days. I do have some very specific things I do which really impact my hair health. First things first, to avoid breakage and also to keep my hair looking better, I don't brush it at all. Brushing it causes a lot of breakage, especially if you use a regular brush. Even if you use like a wet brush, it's like you can still kind of hear your hair being like ripped apart as you brush it. So if I ever need to kind of detangle my hair, I'll use my fingers so that I can be really gentle with it. But even that I try to avoid just because the more you brush your hair, the frizzier it gets too. And I kind of, you can tell, I kind of have wavy hair. So if I brush it, it just like the whole structure is gone. So that's one important thing is I don't brush my hair until I'm like about to shower or if I'm in the shower with my conditioner, you'll see that later. Another thing I do is I never wear my hair up or if I do, it's like a couple times a year just because wearing your hair in a ponytail really like if it's cramped up in like buns or ponytails all day, it just leads to more breakage and dryness. So I wear my hair down almost every day. But when I do need to put my hair up, I only use these types of hair ties. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these, but I've been using these for the past like seven years. And the difference this has made in my hair is crazy. Like the minute I started using these, all my split ends and like the breakage that kept happening at like the base of my hair where you would tie the ponytail disappeared. Like it just stopped after that. My sister recommended these because her hairdresser recommended them because she said when she was cutting my sister's hair, she could see the line of breakage from where your regular hair tie lies. So she was like, Nor, you need to get this one because it like weaves through your hair to keep it in place instead of like constricting it like a regular hair tie. I'll put a link to them below or something on Amazon if you're interested in finding them. Them. If there's anything you get out of this video, it's that you have to use these. Oh my god, has it been this bright the whole time? I'm dead. Also, in addition to focusing on your hair health, you have to look at your scalp health as well. For me, that just means like making sure it's moisturized, clean. If you struggle with like dandruff and dry skin, you don't want to be like... <laughs> scratching it up all day that will just really irritate your scalp I used to have really really bad like dandruff and dry skin on my head and the key was just like not touching it anymore like I had to go like a full two weeks with like not being allowed to touch it and then it just like all healed itself and was fine also every once in a while I will do like scalp massages so right before I take my showers I'll lather my hair up in a bunch of coconut oil and let it sit for like five to ten minutes or jojoba oil I'll massage it all into my scalp or rice water I don't know if you guys have heard of rice water or I've used it before but it is crazy I started using it a couple years ago and it it makes your hair grow so fast. It's nuts like over COVID I like bleached my hair and it was lighter brown for a bit I went home that day used rice water and a week from that day I had like an inch of grown-out hair like I could visibly see where my hair had grown since I got it bleached a week prior and I was like Oh, I dyed my hair for nothing because I immediately had roots again But it was like whoa I could visibly see how quickly it made my hair grow So the way you make rice water is you get a little bit of rice Maybe like a third cup or something and then you just rinse it as normal wash away all the yucky water And then after like your third wash put it in a mason jar You fill up your mason jar fully with water and the rice and you shake it up a bit And then you want to remove the rice from the jar so that you're just left with the rice water I think in my footage you'll see I forgot to take the rice out Don't do that. That was a mistake And then you seal the mason jar and you leave it out at room temperature out in the open for like six to twenty 
24 hours and then before you shower you just like douse your head in it which you guys will see at the end of the video when I do it it's just crazy rice water is different and it's so good for like your hands just everything it's so good period I've also heard you don't want to overdo it though because then your hair gets like a protein overload or something which is also bad so I truthfully have only done it like once a year for the past like three or four years I feel like you could do it like once a month maybe another thing I do to take care of my hair is I don't touch it too often actually that's a lie I'm playing with my hair all day but as much as I can I try to just let it be because I think the more that you mess oh my god I'm doing it again the more that you mess with your hair and like your waves will like come apart you want to keep the structure intact especially if you have wavy hair you don't want to mess with it too much if you have pin straight hair do your thing I feel like <sighs> must be nice for me I really try not to like brush through it move it around too much I especially try not to touch my scalp too much because your hands have oils on them and if you're trying to make your hair last longer without washing it your hair will get greasier if you're like messing with it with your hands if there's any consistent theme throughout my hair care routine it's just like not messing with it going along with that theme I do not use heat on my hair at all I am so sorry to my Dyson Airwrap girlies or hair dryer girlies or straightening iron girlies but if you really want healthy soft hair you gotta cut it out you can't be doing all that in my life I've never really used heat on my hair I would say within the past 10 years I've used heat like four times I know my sister uses her Dyson Airwrap every day so her hair looks really good because it's like fully styled but then when it's not styled it like looks more dead because it's been fried so much so I know using heat can make your hair look better but in the long run I feel like it's not worth it because if you go long enough without using heat on your hair eventually all your healthy hair will grow out it'll be so silky smooth if you do use heat on your hair just make sure to use a heat protectant that is the main thing I also don't use that many products on my hair I know people love like their mousses and whatnot and I think if you have curly hair like that is necessary but for my hair texture I find that my hair is the soft when it's product free like straight out of the shower completely air dried nothing added to it I've tried using the curly girl method and you'll see when I shower my hair is like really wavy when it's wet I'm kind of a hair minimalist, but it pays off other things I do to avoid split ends and breakage is not sleeping on my hair when it's wet Keeping my hair trimmed at the end so that it's not like just fraying apart Also, this is pretty obvious But I think the main thing that keeps my hair healthy too is not bleaching and dyeing it Obviously that is really bad for your hair even though it looks so cutie It's another one of those things where it's like a toss-up of you can bleach your hair and it looks really cute but then it's dead or you can use heat on your hair every day but it's dead for me i just decided no heat no color and it's been feeling amazing like i said i bleached and dyed my hair over quarantine so 2020 which is four years ago at this point in the span of four years my hair has grown this much like these little bits at the end were the parts that were bleached you can kind of see they're like a weird color and this is the only part of my hair that has like any breakage and i don't even think it's because they're my ends it's because they were bleached so i am so excited for the day where i can just chop off these ends and it'll be fully black again one investment I've made for my hair was buying a filtered shower head I live in Southern California for college and now I live in New York City So depending on where you live your quality of water will be better or worse when I was at college I didn't have a filtered shower head and the water quality was so bad It was like actually disgusting I would come out of the shower and I would feel dirtier and my hair was like crunchy and like it felt like I had this film on it And I was like no this cannot be good So when I moved to New York City I invested in a shower head and it has changed the game I also think the water quality in New York is a lot better anyways, but with the addition of the filtered shower head it is amazing I have the the Jolie shower head and it works really well. I really like it. No complaints here. When I come out of the shower, I feel like I actually washed it. If you feel like you have bad water quality, I would definitely recommend one of those. Speaking of showers, it's time for me to show you guys my full shower routine. I just did the cosplay hands. Here is my full shower routine. Let's go. Okay guys, so I have my day three hair right here and here's how we're looking. Honestly, still looking pretty good. It's just starting to get greasy. I think I'm kind of a beast and I train my hair to not get greasy until like day four or five. So I can last a while, but this is usually where I wash it. Also at this point I haven't brushed my hair since the last time I washed it and that's why it's still looking pretty put together not frizzy at all Sometimes if my hair is feeling really tangled I'll brush it right now right before I get in the shower, but usually it's fine Also like I was talking about earlier I have my rice water So pre showers when I would pull this out or when I pull out my coconut oil jojoba oil And I would massage it into my scalp into my ends But for now we're gonna use this and this has been fermenting overnight. So it is really stinky Shower reveal and this is about to get crazy. I just dump it all on my head. Sorry to break everybody's heart so I will not be getting naked for you guys in the shower. So I have my little black bow swimwear set that I'm wearing. I'm just gonna flip my hair over. And honestly, you just pour this everywhere. I start on the top of my head, right on the roots. Oh my God, so stinky. That's because it's alive. And you just wanna get your hair fully saturated if you can. If you had like a spray bottle or something more precise than a ball jar, that would be great. But I just really try to massage it into my scalp. sit for like five to ten minutes if you really want to absorb into your hair do whatever you like 
Beautiful, beautiful, so gorge. So just a reminder, rice water is good for hair growth. Like when I use this, immediately my hair grows. It's crazy. And then coconut oil or jojoba oil masks, those are good for softening the hair and making it silky smooth. But anyways, now that I've let this sit for a bit, time to get into the real shower routine. Ah, why is it not working? Ah! Okay, queen. So as soon as I get in the shower, I'm immediately starting my hair care routine. That's the first thing I do because I want to give my hair a ton of time to sit in the conditioner. So you fully saturate the head. When your hair is all nice and saturated, you're going to go into the shampoo and conditioner. So I'm pretty particular with my shampoo and conditioner brand because I don't want any parabens, sulfates, silicones, none of that crazy stuff because even though it makes your hair feel softer, it's actually damaging your hair so much. When you start using a clean, minimalistic shampoo and conditioner, you might feel a difference in your hair and like it'll be drier for a bit as it detoxes from all the nasty stuff that your old shampoo and conditioner used to have, but it's worth it in the long run. That is how I've achieved these results. So my favorite brands have to be Native. This is my all-time favorite. It smells so good, and it really moisturizes my hair. I've been using this for like two years now, but I've also like functioned beauty a lot. Honestly, those are my top two. If I had to pick anything off the shelf, those are the ones I'm going for. <sighs> You cannot be using those really basic shampoo and conditioner brands anymore if you want to have healthy hair. You just can't do it. So first I'm taking my shampoo. So we're focusing on the shampoo on the top part of our head, like our scalp only. If you shampoo your ends, it'll dry them out, so you don't want to do that. And then we're going to rinse it out. Then once all our shampoo is rinsed out, we're gonna go in with our conditioner. And you wanna make sure your hair is kind of like squeezed out because if your hair is too wet, the conditioner can't really like get in there. It'll all just kind of rinse off. And we're gonna be pretty generous. And this is where you're gonna brush through your hair. Ah, oh my God. Bro, my nails are like halfway falling off and my freaking, that was gross. And this is where you're gonna brush through your hair because the conditioner is all silky smooth. It's not gonna damage your hair at all. And the conditioner is focused on the bottom part of your hair. If you put it in your scalp, it might end up being a little bit greasy. So up to you if you want greasy hair. And also while you're brushing through your hair, you'll probably notice that all of your hair is falling out. Don't be afraid, it's normal. Also while you have conditioner in, I like to scrunch it up a little bit to define my waves. Gorgeous, so gorgeous. And because I started my hair routine at the very beginning of my shower, my conditioner has a long time to sit in my hair and really soften it up, make it nice and silky, because you want to give your conditioner as much time as you can. Do not rinse it out immediately. And I feel like this is why my hair is so soft, is because I treat my conditioner like a hair mask every time I use it. Like, I am letting it soak. Mm. Now I'm gonna actually continue showering, so stop looking at me. Turn it off. I'm done now. I actually, never mind. I fully undressed, took a shower, put this back on, and now we're finishing the hair care routine. So now I'm at the end of my shower, and all I have to do is wash out my conditioner. I also forgot to mention, you don't want to shower in burning hot water, because that can like scorch your hair too. Just a nice, medium, warm temperature is good. Now that all the conditioner is washed out, we have to wring out our hair. But I've heard you don't want to do the thing where you just like yank it and pull all the water out. You want to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And now that most of the water's out, I finish off by scrunching it up and squeezing again so that I can form my wave pattern, my curl pattern. And as we enter the hair drying process, you want to avoid frizz as much as you can. So there's one thing you definitely don't want to do, which is swinging your hair back and forth and like smacking it around. Oh my God. Even as I squeeze it like this, I'm not trying to go like very gentle, okay? As you can see, I stand here doing this for quite a while. Now here, I'm just gonna take my towel. I know people say that towels can also cause frizz and you should use like a t-shirt or a microfiber towel, but I've tried those and I don't really see a difference, honestly, for myself. And it just takes too long to dry. Like they don't absorb enough water. Here, I take my towel and I do this step again, but at the same time, kind of trying to squeeze some of the water out. Gorgina, look at those waves. No product needed. Then to be so real, I do wrap my hair up like this most of the time. I know that's also a thing that people say isn't that good, but I've never really noticed any difference when I do other stuff, so I do whatever I want with my towel. But I don't let it stay like this for too long. I just want to get more of that water out. Another scrunch for good measure, and that is it. Now while my hair is still damp, I want to try my best to sit in one spot and just let it dry. If you wash your hair and then immediately sprint out of the house and run down the street, your hair will become so frizzy and messed up that the hair wash won't even be worth it anymore. This is honestly one of the most important steps to make your hair actually look good. One thing I do is lay on my stomach and let the hair like bunch up in front of me so that it kind of stays forming those curls. And then I just sit here and I get some of my much needed screen time. Gotta get at least 10 hours a day to feel something. <laughs> Period. 
Every time I go on TikTok, I realize how much I wish I could dance. But besides that, that's pretty much it. And now we're here. That shower I took earlier this morning, and this is the final result. I feel like it looks pretty good. I love my hair. I also forgot to show you when I'm drying it. Sometimes a little life hack I do is I twist my hair like this, so I kind of get these heatless waves. And this just makes my hair look a lot bouncier when it dries. Like I get those kind of ringlet waves without any heat. Anyways, that's about it for my hair care routine. I hope these tips help you out. And if you guys have any of your own hair tips, let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. Hit that subscribe button. Do it right now. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!